Right, Celtic have been pretty quiet this week. We've had an on this day, bizarrely, for when Kieran Tierney made his debut for the club. We've had news of Patrick Clamalla leaving Celtic and the club somehow getting three and a half million for a guy who I think scored about four goals in 18 months. We've also had some generic match chat about the Aberdeen draw. We had loads on the women's team, which is probably the only stuff that I'll forgive them for at the moment. But in general, Ewan, there's not been a lot coming from Celtic in Dominic Mackay's first week at the club. Right, I don't want to crucify the guy at all, and yeah. I'm genuinely not, because I think he's going to be a great capture for the club. But were you expecting a wee bit more from his first few days in terms of what we've seen from the club? Uh, well, I'll get this out of the way. I, I don't want to sound like I'm entitled, uh, and I don't want to sound like I want the moon on a stick and all these things. But uh, you would have thought there'd be something, um, even just like a sort of a statement from the club saying Celtic have welcomed Dominic Mackay to blah, blah blah. He'll be doing such and such. Just kind of a, a repetition of what they've already said, but like updated to reflect the fact that he's joined. I would have, I would have expected something like that, or just some you know vague platitudes about the kind of thing that he wants to do at Celtic would have been kind of nice. Um, so yeah, not crucified him at all, and it's it's probably not his decision yet, in fact, but it's a little bit strange that we've had such a significant change at the boardroom level uh, early, earlier than planned, and yeah, nothing from the club. And um, I'll probably go into this later on, but like the more, the, the, the quieter the club are, the more leads to kind of ridiculous speculation, which I'm, I'm sure we'll cover. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I was certainly expecting to see something from the club or even Dominic Mackay early in the week, maybe I, I mean, I, I put out the, the almost fantasy suggestion that he would speak on camera, they'd post it on a YouTube channel and he'd discuss his blueprint for how Celtic are going to win the Champions League in the next five seasons, something, <laughs> you know, simple like that. But we really haven't seen anything from the club at all. Is there an argument that the club can't really win here? Because if they've got nothing really to, to say of note at the moment, a la a managerial appointment, a director of football appointment. They're going to be criticised for whatever they do, whether they post nothing at all or whether they post on this days and happy birthdays and all that kind of stuff. Do, do you see the club's side in the, you know, the, the club's argument in this one or, or am I just, you know, being daft? No, I, th I think you're right. I mean, as a veteran of online abuse, um, I would say myself that, you know, it's... Uh, it's a difficult position for the club to be in because no matter what, as I say, no matter what they do, they're going people people going, well, where's the manager? And they're quite right to ask that because, well, where's the manager? So, yeah, kind of, they're damned if they do, damned if they don't. But you would have expected maybe a little something, just something to get, like, just the atmosphere a wee bit better in Celtic, just yeah. something, something to make us a wee bit more kind of excited, some kind of, you know, identifying some kind of future planning or some kind of initiative that Dominic Mackay's got because he clearly had a job interview where he had to propose things. So like to maybe drop one or two would have been nice, maybe just an idea or you know, response to where Celtic could be in the next five, 10 years, kind of what they're planning. Uh, we only really hear stuff from Dermot Desmond on very, very rare occasions. And, and Peter Lowell kind of tends to, he, he does interviews now and then, but it tends to be when something's not either gone fantastically well or horrendously wrong. So it'd be nice to like, as, as bizarre as it sounds, it'd be nice to have someone kind of boring come out of the club because there would be something, because it would just be a case of like, well, okay, you know, the people who are in charge have a, some kind of plan or, you know, even if it's a non-announcement, it'd be just, just communication between the board and the supporters would be something, you know. It's, uh, it maybe sounds a wee bit daft or, or optimistic, but, you know, it would be, you'd expect it from another club, especially when, you know, boardrooms around Europe are panicking and apologising to their fans all the time. And I understand it would have been drowned out in the context of this week, obviously, but, you know, it would have been, it would have been nice, I think. Dominic Mackay was announced as a new Celtic chief executive, what, about three or four months ago? Was it Was it prior to, to Christmas, maybe just after? Mm -hmm. I'm yet to hear his voice. I, I don't know what this guy sounds like. And again, this isn't me. I'm, I'm genuinely not, you know, digging out Dominic Mackay here because he's been no. in the door three or four days. But I just think it would have been great for, for the club to have had some sort of interview with Dominic Mackay. I think you're spot on, even if it's something completely boring, even if it's just him and Peter Law explaining why he's come into the club early. What What is this handover period and what are Celtic hoping to achieve over the next, what is it, three months or so of the handover period before Peter Law leaves the club for good? I just think the, the, the fans are looking for anything 
from the club now. And you're right, we only ever hear from the current hierarchy when something's gone badly wrong or they're looking for money from the support. And, and that certainly has to change. The the new regime at Celtic, whether it's Dominic Mackay or the new director of football or the new manager, they have to take the fans on this journey with them. It's the only way we'll succeed is if the, the team, the boardroom and the fans are all singing from the same hymn sheet. And I, I just really hope that over the next wee while, we see something positive from the club. What do we think about the the pursuit of a new manager, the pursuit of a new sporting director? We've been kind of relatively calm, I think, on 67 Hill Hill, probably in comparison to, to some other media outlets. Well, speak for yourself, man. Yeah. <laughs> You did. You did come on today, absolutely sweating, fifteen minutes it's, ago, and I had to. I had to cool you down and deep breaths true. and all that kind of stuff. But I think in general, we we have been playing things. You know, we, we are quite calm because the stuff still coming from the trusted media sources, coming from Eddie Howe's camp, even and what Celtic have said, both publicly and in private, that has been reported by journalists, has been pretty calm. Mm-hmm. Are you still calm about the the pursuit of? you know, a manager, Eddie Howe, and a sporting director? I think it would be a really good thing if the board could just say, I know we know, we're getting on with it. We have some candidates in mind. We've been doing such and such searching. We've been using such and such agency to identify a director of football. We've been interviewing people even. Just something, some kind of indication that there's life um, behind the doors of paradise. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's just, you know, it's just something, just some kind of kernel of, as you say, I mean, I know we've been relatively calm about it, but I think the longer it goes on, the more people are going to get to it. And again, like the more it kind of just leads to ridiculous speculation that, you know, inevitably I have to end up writing about and saying, this is nonsense. And, you know, I don't always like doing that because, you know, I like to let people's imaginations run wild and, you know, but um, yeah, the more that the, the quieter they are, the more we're just going to get like scurrilous kind of half-baked nonsense coming out of, of certain outlets and, projected 11s about a Jose Mourinho team and just mm-hmm. just all this, you know, it's um, it doesn't really help anyone. And, uh, you know, given that, again, you know, it's not going to be looking for our money uh, for uh, season tickets, you know, uh, just just some communication, please. Yeah, I think last year it was early March when ah. they, they first put out the shout for season tickets. We are now, we're approaching May and there's been nothing from Celtic in the topic of season tickets, and with good reason. They know that if they mm-hmm. promote season tickets right now, a lot of people won't renew, as simple as that, and Celtic will know deep down they have to give the support something to cling on to. A few months ago, I was very much of the opinion that Celtic had to try and get a manager in as soon as possible, a director of football in as soon as possible, because we had a lot of time to work with between you know all these meaningless games at the end of the season. We've still got a few months before our first competitive game, Champions League qualifier next season. For me, the ship's kind of sailed now with regards to mm-hmm. getting someone in early, whether it be director of football or manager. I feel like we've, we've kind of missed that opportunity a little bit. I mean, Celtic have got three games to play the rest of this season, then the season's over. That, that's all we've got to play. Our season is over at the moment. So I just now just want them to get it right. I, I'm not even as as bothered about the timing as I as I once was. I think that that ship has sailed, as I say. So I'm I'm just wanting Celtic to to get the right manager in. Um, and I think as frustrated as the support is at the moment, as long as we get that manager in at some stage over the next three weeks, four weeks, mm-hmm. then then I think people will be happy. If it goes on any longer than that. You're just you're just really questioning what's going on in, in the background at the club. Yeah, um, and also kind of the longer they take, the the worse you feel about it. I think. I mean, there's 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 a, you know an argument to suggest that the longer they take, you know, the the more risky it becomes. The more likely they are to panic and go, oh god, yeah. okay, well, Champions League qualifiers in four weeks. You know, we have to do something now. Uh, but I do I do genuinely think like maybe these announcements will come. In conjunction, you know, with each, which in conjunction with each other, you know, but if we appoint a manager or if we appoint a director of football, the rest will kind of fall into place naturally. So I think it's just kind of waiting for that first domino. I mean, you could say that Dominic Mackay was the first domino, um, no pun intended. Um, the Dominic effect. 
<laughs> well, there you go. Um, that's that's my next book out uh, <laughs> next year. Um, but I know it's just you're just waiting for something because like you feel the rest of it's going to fall into place. And and I, I totally get I totally get the silence. I do I get it. But if it isn't half frustrating, man. I know it's totally frustrating, but it's been that all season, hasn't it? And then when we've got yeah. anything from the club, they've been inevitably you know shooting themselves in the foot. Do you think the club are working on something in the background then? It, it, well, obviously they are, but do you think something is close? Do, do you think they're just, you know, as you say, getting these pieces into place and then they're going to go, bang, here's your manager, here's your director of football, here's your head of recruitment replacing Nick Hammond? <laughs> yeah, surely. I mean, it's... I mean, surely they've got a plan. Surely they've got kind of. They're just waiting for the things, for the pieces to 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 fall together, and then yeah, and then immediately they want our season ticket money because it's it's as as inadequate as you think this board are, and they have shown inadequacies, especially this season. You've got to believe that people this experienced in hiring people and in business and in making massive decisions have something. I mean, surely to God, like. Are you familiar with the the Super League proposal of recent days? <laughs> I've, I haven't actually heard much about it. I bought some shares in it on Monday and just hoping for the best. <laughs> uh, not really heard it. I mean, I, I'll, I'll follow that up after this video, but yeah, it's uh, it's confusing. I mean, football in general has kind of been confusing. And again, like, whatever they announced this week, we could absolutely get drowned out by some kind of nonsense about a Super League or an Atlantic League or a Human League or whatever. Like, it's, yeah, it's become a little bit daft, but again, we do need something. Yeah, I agree. I mean, from my own personal viewpoint, I do think that Celtic are, I think Celtic are close. I, I, that isn't based on any ITK knowledge. It's just based on what I have read from people who are trusted in this process. And the message is still from these people that there's no panic on Celtic's side and there isn't really any panic on Eddie Howe's side. It's clear that Celtic want Eddie Howe. That mm -hmm. much is clear. It's also clear that, that Eddie Howe has interest in the Celtic job. We don't know for sure that it's his favourite job out of all the available ones at the moment or the ones that could be available, but we know that Eddie Howe has some sort of interest in Celtic because right. negotiations wouldn't have got to this stage otherwise. So both parties want each other. I think it's just a case of, of working out exactly how it's going to happen, but you know what it's like with Celtic. The more there's silence, the more there's going to be these rumours, the more fans are going to fear the worst. And with right. good reason, because we know that when negotiations drag on from a Celtic point of view, it invariably ends badly. John McGinn, there, there are other examples out there, I'm sure. Stephen Fletcher going way back. Um, that You've always got the worry that Celtic are penny-pinching, mm -hmm. that Celtic are trying to foist Gavin Strachan or John Kennedy on Eddie Howe and he doesn't want it. I'm not saying that's the case at all, but what I'm saying is that when Celtic don't speak, all of this conjecture, you know, raises its head and people are going to, you know, believe what they want. So really hopeful that we hear something from Celtic soon. Um, I keep right. saying we have to hear something soon, Ewan, but I mean, do we? We've got three meaningless games now over the next, I think, four weeks or something. I mean, Celtic could take the next five weeks to, to appoint it and we can't do anything about it and it probably doesn't even matter. No, no, it's true. I mean, I think we've seen this year how kind of um, how how well listened to the Celtic support are on, on certain issues. Yeah, I mean, ultimately we could just focus on the football for a few weeks. I mean, I know that's been kind of a grim pursuit this season, but you know, there's opportunities. At Nay Ralston could get back in the team. Uh, we might see Vassil Vassilis Barkas make a save. Anything's possible. <laughs> Anything. Uh, I was going to I was going to say we might see Patrick Klamala, but yeah, um, it's yeah. I mean. Again, when you're talking about a manager coming in, you know, and, and people have been like, oh, well, you know, Eddie Howe can get to it because if he's not, if he's, if he doesn't want to jump at this, uh, this job, he's, he's a manager considering his options. He's considering uprooting his life. There's a lot more to it than just like, oh, yeah, I'm interested. You know, he's, he's talking about his next job that he probably wants to commit to for at least a year, you know, and, and, and that, if he sees himself in the Premiership, the Premier League, um, then, you know, fair play to him. He'll be considering his options. You know, it doesn't make him a bad person for, for wavering a wee bit. Uh, but yeah, it's, we've got three games, uh, who knows, anything could happen. We might see Dane Murray, or Owen Moffat, or Adam Montgomery, or, you know, we could see a raft of youngsters getting games, that could be exciting. We could see Finch players getting games, that could be fun. 
we, we could see Scott Brown starting for the 400th time this season again. Anything's possible. You just got to have a laugh with it. Yeah. And we'll continue to do that on 67 Hail Hail, both on the YouTube and online. I do think that um, Celtic fans are really at a low ebb at the moment. We, we know that the, the apathy towards the team is, is something that I've not seen in a number of years. People really just couldn't be bothered with that game on, on Wednesday night and, and with good reason. But I do think that if Celtic get it right and you've got Dominic Mackay sitting next to a new manager and a new director of football in the space of a couple of weeks, then people will turn very quickly. Um, season tickets will be out. There'll be a, you know, there'll be a good um, atmosphere in the support and, and people will be wanting to go again next season. And obviously, I've said it before, but COVID restrictions being loosened and fans getting back to games down south and up here soon will, will have an effect as well. So there's lots to be excited about on the channel. Um, thanks for watching this video. Thanks, Ewan, for your time. Let Not us know in the comments below what you think about what we've been talking about today. Are you frustrated by the silence coming out of Celtic? Do you think the club are working on something? Do you think the club are close to announcing something? When could we get an announcement? And who will the announcement be? Loads of questions for you there. Get involved below. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you've not done it yet. And we'll speak to you soon.